Thank you very much. As we heard in the previous talk, speed is very important, and for graphics or 3D graphics, it's even more important. So you can't really make um, slow things. You need this 30 frames per second, or you, you never can play your game. What I'm talking today, I can't talk about everything 3D with Python. There are many libraries available. I just select some uh, things I talk today. One thing I want to talk about is Blender. I start with that. And then I go to a little bit other way. I go to the low-level programming. We'll see what's that. And then in the, in the last part, I will see that Python is, is very good for also another thing. It's called pre-processed uh, 3D graphics. I will talk what's that. But first, I have a question at you. Who of you is using Blender? Some, yes. OK. Great, <laughs> it's a start. <laughs> so I have to explain what's Blender. Blender is a is an open source 3D creation suit. Um, it's it's uh, how can I say it's um, I can't really say it's a 3D modeling uh, package. Maybe you know other modeling packages like 3D Studio that's commercial, or or Cinema's uh, 4D etc. Blender goes a little bit different way. It's more than modeling. You can make um, movies, for example, big movies, animation. And one thing you can also do is video editing and motion tracking. I will show an example of that. Blender itself is also a game engine, so you can create games with, with Blender. So Blender would be the player for your game. So you start your game by, by starting the, the Blender player. So let me show a few impressions. That's from YouTube, it's the official channel of, of Blender. They show something what's possible with Blender. And you see animation is always the, the key point, so you, you can make really nice looking um, things with global illumination. You can use like here um, cartoon shading, you can have, um, yeah, you can make funny movies and many, many things. There are no limitations, so you can also realistic things and, and um, not realistic things. <laughs> and of course games, that's um, always important, and many other things. But let me show, as yes, it's beautiful, isn't it? With, uh, that's, but it has nothing really to do with Python so far, unfortunately. But it's, it's, it's quite cool anyways. <laughs> So another thing you can do with, with um, Blender, you can make motion tracking. So you see this woman is, is holding a 3D object in, in her hand. The original footage would be that she has some, some device which has some, some uh, colors that's used for tracking. And then, let me show it from the beginning again, if my mouse, ah, it doesn't, uh, I do it like this. Okay. You see this is, um, is, is, a, is motion tracking. If you are a Star Wars fan, we heard something about Jedi's earlier. <laughs> you could make a lightsaber, and with with the motion tracking, you could really make a realistic-looking lightsaber. You can can make Sith Lords versus Jedi <laughs> movies. You find a lot of these things in YouTube. It's quite funny, actually. So let me come to Python and Blender. Unfortunately, I don't have a mouse here. I don't show it live, but. It, it doesn't really matter, I think you can see it. If you open Blender, you see a cube in the scene. It's the first thing you see, is a cube. And then there is in the yeah, top left, a uh, little bit left uh, section, there is a menu where you can, you can switch to, I think you can't really read it, it's called scripting. So if you do that, you will see this one. Don't have to see any details at the moment, but Below, you see a Python console. So Python is actually included in Blender. So you can start programming. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, perfect. So you can actually start here coding any Python program you want. So you don't have to install Python anymore. You can code here. <laughs> and actually, it's some, some people use that for learning Python. It's, it's a good way. I will show later why that's like this. But you can, you can access, of course, all things of Blender. You can access from the Python console. Even, even the GUI. You can add new things. But most important, you can add, add this, the scene and the, the, your objects. And it's very easy. There is a module. It's called B 
PI, BPI, Blender Python. <laughs> yes, and, and there you can access over the data. You can access objects, scenes, materials, and all these things. So at the moment, we, we had a cube in the scene. We also had a camera. You didn't see that. And if you type, for example, this list, Blender Python data objects, you would get um, the list back of everything in your scene. At the moment, that's the camera, the cube, and there's also a lamp, a light in the, in the scene where um, your cube is illuminated. So, but one, one very nice thing in Blender is um, you can open, you can edit. Just click here if you are in this, in this um, thing. I think the slides will be available later. You can, you can reproduce it. Then you can click, for example, here on cube, and this will add a new cube. Or you can, you can also select another shape, like a plane, torus, cone. These are uh, standard, standard um, primitives in, in Blender. So if you do that, you see something very special. So you click on this create new cube. And what you see here is actually the Python code. The Python code for adding this new cube. So you don't even need a documentation. You can just learn from, from this Python co console and this, this uh, log what, what the actual command is for adding some object to the scene. So uh, what you see here is this command. It's quite long because there are some, some additional things we don't really need, but you can, you can shortcut it. So for example, you, you write Blender Python op smash primitive cube add, and then you say how big the cube is, radius two, and its location. In, in this um, case, it would be zero, three, zero. That's uh, X, Y, Z, so it's in Y, it's, it's three. And you see here in this little screenshot, this is the bigger cube that was just added with this simple Python command. But it goes on, you can, you can uh, take one of these axes here, you can, you can move it, you can create your scene, and if you move that, you also see the, the command in this small console, what's the command for moving? And you see, it's Blender Python, ops, operations, transform, translate, and lots of commands again, but the most important are, is the first one. Um, it was moved in set axis, the blue axis here, um, about 3.1 um, units. Okay. So there are many commands. Then you can start opening um, the window for the, for the operations. And you can, for example, do a subdivision. A subdivision is you, you, every, every shape in your scene, you, you cut into smaller pieces. Yeah. And if you do that three times, your cube is subdivided like that. So you will think, what's, what's the purpose of this? Um, yeah, I would ask the same <laughs> if I were you. What's the purpose? Any idea? The purpose is now you can start modeling with that. Um, if, if you ever use clay for modeling, real life, no, no computer, clay, you know clay, <laughs> you know what's that? You can, you can model some, some objects. For a bunny, a bottle like this, you can, can model. And the same thing is, is in this um, with, with, with Blender. So if you make a subdivision, you can, you can move a little bit these things out and create new shapes. That's basically how you model. But the talk about today is about Python and not about modeling. So let me go to the next step. Now we want to create real geometry, something completely new with Python. And this can be done by specifying the vertices, that's the, the, the points, if, if you want, of the object, and its, its um, connections, that's called the faces. So you have different faces. For example, this, this object here would have this, this face here and you can create this um, with, with code. So you need the connections and the points. And I made that for a tetrahedron. Here you need a little bit of mathematics, square root of two, and create that. And here you have the data. You could also make a cube. You can make anything you want with that. And then you just create a new mesh by calling BPI data mesh is new and give that a name. 
And if you have a mesh, that's, that's the, the whole thing with the, with the vertices and faces, you create a new object that will be dis displayed in this little scene graph we, see, we saw before. And then you specify where the, the object is located. In this case, I made 0, 0, 0, so it's in the center of the universe. And I give that, um, um, I give that, I take the scene and I actually link that object to the scene so we, we see it in the scene graph and you see your tetrahedron in the world. You can try to make that. Just copy paste this code in the Blender console or you see I made here an import at the beginning. You can also create scripts. And that would be a script. So you import first and call that and it's it's regular Python script. Already finished? No. <laughs> Would be not good. I'm on slide 17 now of 59. Yeah, the problem <laughs> the problem is I had enough time in the train this morning. It's never it's bad to have a way of one, two hours almost. So I, I added some more slides. <laughs> um, let me talk something I just made this week. Um, we are creating an application for um, uh, the ancient Roman city of Augusta Raurica, that's um, a historic place near Basel, Switzerland. And there we make some reconstructions. And this one is a code I will go into detail. We used this week. What we had is we created the model. This is just one part of the model that was generated with the Esri city engine. That's a very complicated software for create large cities. It's also used um, in movies, for example, and you can create a um, procedural city with that. So you define some rules and it generates huge cities. And we de defined rules for this ancient city and exported it here and imported it with Blender. So I called the script, this small script before we saw, the script removes double vertices. The script removes interior faces. So if inside the building there are some more polygons, you will never see that because you can't see it from outside. It will be removed. And um, it joins some, some, uh, some uh, vertices together. So if I do that, you see here the final results. I go from 125,000 triangles, just this, this only one small part, of course, of the whole city, I go to 56,000 triangles. So it's an optimization almost, uh, not quite 60%, just with a few lines of code. It's Python code. Isn't Python cool? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay. That was the part about Blender. Of course, you can. I could talk hours and hours about Blender. You can do many, many things. There is also the game engine in Blender, I said before. The problem is that it will change in the near future, so it makes no sense to start now. You have to wait a couple of months and then use the new, new game engine of Blender. So let me come to the, to the second part, to the low-level APIs. There are some low-level APIs everyone or most people here know. One is called OpenGL, that's the Open Graphics Library. This exists since 1992, before it was called Iris GL. It's from Silicon Graphics, a small company back then, a smaller company now. <laughs> and <laughs> but today it's, it's open, it's an open standard. And this standard is used for many, many uh, professional and non-professional games, uh, software. <laughs> and and um, yeah, it's the, the big thing about OpenGL is it's fully cross-platform. You have you can run it on Linux, you can run it on Mac OS, and uh, what was the other? Uh, my, uh, my Microsoft Windows, exactly. That exists too, number 10. But the, um, Microsoft is not very, yeah, they don't like OpenGL, so they said, we make our own, that it's called Direct, DirectX, and for, you know that maybe for games, many games use DirectX, but the problem is it only runs on Windows and maybe on Xbox, and that's all. So I limit myself to OpenGL today, but if you really want to use DirectX, um, there is a way with Python. There is a, a library called DirectPython11, 
Actually, today is number 12 with Windows 10, but doesn't really matter. Um, Direct Python 11 at SourceForge, not GitHub. <laughs> .NET, it's not cross-platform, you have to even warn, <laughs> you can experiment with that. Um, but I recommend using OpenGL, it's more Pythonic way because we are cross-platform, more or less. On the mobile phones we lack a little bit, but that will change in the near future. So let me um, talk about PyOpenGL, that's um, a binding more or less to the C API. It supports OpenGL version 1.1 to 4.4. The newest version of OpenGL would be 4.5, but don't worry, um, it's not that important. Um, you can use it with many popular GUI toolkits. So uh, before someone said he's using Qt, PyQt, or PySide, more or less the same. Um, you can also use it with WX, Python, and many other other um, uh, toolkits. But what's, what's OpenGL exactly? Uh, this is, is one slide, that's enough to explain OpenGL. <laughs> um, actually, you have some geometry in the real world, vertices, faces, and then you have some operation here. It's called a projection, and you bring it to the screen. Okay, how do you do that? You have to make some math to bring this maybe to here, this to here, this vertices is here. It's called the vertex operation. That's programmed in uh, OpenGL shading language, not Python. You need to learn a new language to do that. And then to color, to make these colors, you need to program again in the OpenGL shading language. It's called um, fragment shader, where you place the fragments. Why is that not in Python? because it has to run on the GPU, and there is no GPU version of Python so far. And if you say, oh, that's something I want to do, I don't recommend doing that. It makes no sense. You have to learn GLSL. There's no way around. And you can make your cool shaders, it's called, and um, implement, for example, some lightning um, equations. It's, um, you are quite free what you do. But you see, we are very low level. We are programming the GPU directly. And you see, I'm not very um, happy with that. It's not really Pythonic. At the beginning, I say graphics the Pythonic way. There are some, some um, libraries who try to make it a little bit more Pythonic. One of them is Wispy. Wispy. Um, it's actually for two targets, people who want to program in OpenGL, but it uses an object-oriented interface to OpenGL. And there is also some, some little bit more high-level part where you can just program without knowledge of this low-level stuff. So um, if you want to install it um, on any non-Windows platform, you can install it using pip install wispy. It requires NumPy and um, it requires OpenGL compatibility, but usually it's no problem today. And you need a compatible um, GUI toolkit, for example, um, cute, if we, we heard it enough today, or PySide or whatever. Um, I recommend using a virtual environment. Here's the details for installing it. Don't uh, break your machine. It's still not the finished version. It's version 0.0.0, zero, um, dot zero, dot zero, no, some less zeros, dot four. If you want to download the development version, that's one more, zero, 0.5.0, zero, dev 0.0. Zero, Zero, zero. <laughs> yeah. You can uh, download it from GitHub and compile it there. If you use the development version, you can actually use 3D graphics in the Jupyter notebook or the IPython notebook, whatever you would like to call it. Windows, yeah, you can. I recommend downloading the, <laughs> the um, finished um, modules unless you have Visual Studio installed and compile it on Windows. You can read that. So you can make a small app, for example, just um, clearing the color. We have still some time. I can show that in my favorite computer language, Python. What else? You can't read that. I can't make it bigger. Yes, I can. Just a little bit too big. So you see, the first thing is um, 
if you want to use um, low-level computer graphics, you have to program these shaders. So in Python, you have to define a, a string and program here these shaders. It's the, the vertex shader, just setting um, the projection of, of the uh, vertices, and the fragment shader setting a color for every pixel. It's also called fragment, but we don't go into details now. Um, and then you create the vertices of the cube, and you create some sort of canvas, and you define which which uh, GUI toolkit I used. Piglet here, Piglet. It's it's a it's another. It's it's not cute. It's easier to install. That's the only reason I used it here. And you can start this program. You see a very long program, and you have one cube. Hooray! <laughs> Yeah, not really hooray, because you see, for one cube, <laughs> this code, <laughs> it's, it's um, not the best solution, isn't I it? <laughs> I have a quick question there. Is the cube, uh, the rotation, is it done entirely on the GPU? Or? No, no, this is done in, in, uh, in Python. This is the Python part, This right? is Python, this is Thank Python. You. Okay, and we also, but I only show a screenshot, we don't want to lose too much time. You can try it for yourself, if I find the... Slides again, yeah. See the, the cube? And you can also um, use Jupyter Notebook for that. However, you, you know, Jupyter Notebook, I think it's familiar. IPython Notebook, I think everyone knows. Okay, if not, download it, use it. <laughs> it's quite cool. Um, there is some other thing. There is not only OpenGL, there is WebGL. Every browser, even Ethan Explorer um, supports WebGL. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a standard from 2011 where you can put 3D graphics um, on your web page. And these all things combined in Vispy and, and uh, with Jupyter Notebook, you can create actually create 3D content, including animations, in the Jupyter Notebook. This is very new, um, and this will, will be developed even further. So, um, you see, I'm not quite happy with that. As I said, it's too complicated if you think the first example is Blender. So you just click this button and you have your cube or you, you create some geometry. It's not really a, a huge uh, code fragment. Uh, so you can, it's, it's, it's quite more easy. So, um, so this real-time graphics with, with Python, I say don't use it if you don't really have a, a reason to do that. You should do that in, in C++, not in Python, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Now, something very different. I've been developing um, a virtual globe. You know Google Earth, maybe. Um, I'm not talking about Google Earth today. I developed Open Web Globe um, starting 2011. It's uh, in WebGL, not Python so far. Um, but Python is also in the, in the whole chain inside. So you see, um, if you have a virtual globe, you need many things. You have data, you have gigabytes, terabytes of data sets, orthophotos. You can use um, images, for example, um, like here from, from OpenStreetMap. You can uh, do many things. You can add some, some buildings. You can make overlays. And to process this data in the first step, Python is, is great. You can um, convert it in the appropriate formats in real time on a web service with Django, with Flask. We use Flask and, um, and do these things. So um, that's what it looks like. If everything is processed, you can go to different places. Um, this one is, uh, is Switzerland from the top. I don't want to go show the whole movie. There are some other things you can do. You can add buildings and things and many things. I have one question now. Who of you used Google Earth in the past three weeks? One, two, three, four, five, six, of seven. Uh, seven, eight, okay. <laughs> eight of 100, eight person. <laughs> Is it 100? Uh, I don't count now. Um, okay, another question. Who of you used Google Maps the past Three weeks. Oh, 
or another map service, I don't care, OpenStreetMap, Yahoo, whatever you see, okay, great. <laughs> Swiss admin, what, whatever this URL is. <laughs> Geo Swiss admin something, <laughs> it's too long. <laughs> okay, um, you see, um, eight persons and after almost everyone. Why didn't you use Google Earth? Strange, yeah? strange. Very strange, you see. I asked the same question after five years of development of this globe. <laughs> Why is no one using these globe technologies? We worked so hard, we made, we even had OpenStreetMap data. You see here is streaming of these buildings from OpenStreetMap, streaming of buildings with textures and everything. Yeah. Also people made whole cities and yeah, it's great, but no one using it. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so, <laughs> so I wasted my time, five years, too bad. So, yeah, so now I always show this page, why are web-based, yeah, or not web-based virtual globes so bad? <laughs> why are 2D maps so popular? So, um, yeah, I find some excuses, <laughs> I don't read it now. So I had to think a little bit more, why, what, what can I do? Because I, I like 3D, as you noticed, and I want to develop the next five years 3D things. So I need a new excuse, and this new excuse is, why don't we take the great things from 2D maps and make 3D maps out of it? So, you know, 2D maps is, is, a, is in a quad tree. It's divided in tiles. So what we see here is a prototype that was created 2014 by one of my master students. So it's just a prototype to see if it's really possible. And, and you see here the tiles are, are from a certain angle. So you, it's, it's 3D. This one is also from City Engine, some Roman city. It's 3D, but it's 2D. It's on images. Okay. You can also make different views. Or you can you can um, make different details. So, for example, in in this in this view, that's just one tile. I think the battery is. Um, see, this tile maybe has one thousand triangles, and this one has one million triangles. Just an example. And if you have one thousand triangles or one million triangles, it doesn't matter at all because both are just two D images. So, if you download the one or the other. It's the same speed. So I created some framework. It's called 3dmaps.ch. It's actually a web page. You can <laughs> look. Um, this is completely Python-based, the process, where you have here the data, the geodata, and you have some scene descriptions where you actually describe the, the scene. And then you process this data. You render it using Python. We have a, a way with using um, Pixar Renderman for rendering that. We also use Pothray for rendering, but the whole process is programmed in Python. So the, the view is that. If you make a scene with some teapots, you can just add a few lines of JavaScript code after processing, of course, and then you have this, this scene. You can also make several views. So if you want every one degree angle you change, you could, you could have one million images and download them from the cloud. It's still faster than downloading one million textures from the cloud. So um, here is a short example. You see, I, I make it again so you can see it better. Um, you see here's the, I, I enter the URL and after oh, two seconds, the whole scene is there. This is an open um, data set from Rotterdam. It's, I have to read that, it's about uh, 3 GB of, of geometry and about um, yeah, 500 GB of textures. So you could never download that amount in a, in a real 3D scene. So you see, you have the, the overview. And that's, for me, the, the, the good way Python to use Python for 3D graphics. Because Python is, for me, uh, something you script it, you make a cool small program, you run it, and and you have a great result. I, I never, I don't know. You can correct me in the Q and A section. 
I never see really huge programs with, with millions of, of lines of code in Python. <laughs> there are some exceptions, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, another use case I show is the ancient city of Agosto Rarica. Um, here I have some additional things. Um, one is the, the image in color, and here is a normal map, and here is an is a ID map. The ID map is just a color for every building. So if you have these three things, you can uh, add dynamic lightning, you can change the light position in the images, yeah, you can change that, it's no problem. So you have dynamic things. There is also a depth map where you have for every pixel the depths, so you can add some more things to this, for example, POIs or cars moving behind buildings and all these things, that's possible. So you have uh, a 3D scene just with images. And uh, there's a, a viewer um, I created um, for that. The viewer is written in JavaScript, so we have uh, basically three languages used, OK, four languages. We have Python, we have JavaScript, you have WebGL, and inside WebGL we have the OpenGL shading language. OK, so what's the, the goal of that library? One important goal is um, to make it open source. I will talk about that in a second. And the second goal, uh, we have, have to hurry a little bit, um, to add some more rendering effects. You see, if you have the, the depth map, if you have um, the, the normal map, if you have the color map, we can create some new lighting models, for example, with screen space ambient occlusion. You can create more realistic views, which is also used in games, but we can operate that on, on images. So, it's no way to have faster 3D graphics than with that um, approach. And at the moment, I'm developing a new virtual globe called Open Web Globe 2. Yeah. And this Open Web Globe 2 has this isometric, I call it isometric map sometimes, um, as a default view. So this is default. You can also switch to the, to the previous version if you want, if you can. For example, on mobile devices, you can't. On mobile devices, you can, you can uh, see the complex, complexest, um, really complex 3D models with, with that approach, whereas with, with, um, with desktops, you can switch to the, to the real 3D case. Okay. And as I said, it will be open source somewhere in the second or third quarter of this year. I, I'm working on the API and I want to make a good API, so it takes time. I don't want to release um, something bad and then I have to keep this forever, <laughs> yeah, as we heard today. So um, the conclusion is we learned about three ways to create 3D graphics with Python. One, and I think that's for interactive graphics the best way, is use Blender. There are also some 3D engines I didn't show today but they are mostly outdated, unfortunately. The most um, active community is behind Blender, so Blender and Python is, is, a, is a perfect way to create 3D graphics. Then I showed about low-level graphics. I don't really recommend that. If you want to learn OpenGL, it's a great thing, but don't create your next AAA game <laughs> with, with, uh, with Python. I, don't, I think Python is not the best thing to do that. For learning, for prototyping, it's, it's okay. But if you want to create a, a really a game and, and, and sell that game, there are other things. If you want to start, use Unity 3D. Unfortunately, don't have Python. Um, there are better ways for that. And then I showed the third approach of using Python as a pre-processing mechanism for creating um, 3D views and send them to the, to the browser. So, um, yeah, I believe 1 and 3 is perfect for Python. Okay, then I come to the end, but I want to make some advertisement. I organize um, the Pi Basel um, meetup every three weeks. If someone of you is, is close to the region of Basel, they are invited to come. The next meetup is on February 9th. Um, the topic of that is bring your own talk, <laughs> so everyone can bring. <laughs> yeah. Every two months we make, uh, no, every four months we make a bring your own talk. And then you can talk anything Python-related 
and do that. The next one will be about big data. And then there is another great event in Switzerland, 2016. I think this year is the Python year, Swiss, Swiss Python year. <laughs> there is a GeoPython 2016 conference, it's a three-day conference about Python um, with a subtopic Geo. Um, the main topics are GIS, mapping, um, geography, geophysics, geodesy, geomatics, earth science, geovisualization, and many more things. Also big data, as I said, is a, is a topic, computer vision, machine learning, image processing. So if you have time in, in the summer, and yeah, it's a little bit located more west, the western part, but not all west, so the northwest of Switzerland. And yeah, I would be happy if you can make it. So now we come a little bit four minutes late to the Q&A session. Thank you. Questions? Hi. Um, do you think you could integrate your open web globe to something like open layers? Yes, that's possible. But um, I would need funding for that. I <laughs> quite simple. I, I don't want to build open web globe on top of um, of something like open layers or or another um, leaflet, for example, it, it should be standalone, but the integration would be no problem, but it's not my primary interest. So this is something someone else would have to do and finds the funding for that. Okay. More questions? Good, okay, thank you very much, Martin. Thanks, too.